Please be seated. Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church on this Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday after Pentecost and the end of the church year. Today on Christ the King Sunday, we are reminded that Jesus is the voice of truth that establishes his kingdom here within each of us, allowing us to navigate this world following the voice of our Savior, Christ Jesus. A warm welcome to any visitors who are worshiping among us this morning. Your presence among us is a blessing to us. Today, we really have a wonderful a privilege to be able to celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism with the English family. You may remember that uh, earlier this fall, we were scheduled to baptize Arden Vale English, and the English family was stricken with COVID, but they're apparently all hale and hearty now, and we're happy to be with you and be able to celebrate welcoming Arden into the family of God today. We'll also have a temple talk today from Steve Rock, our council president, on stewardship and in particular, um, bringing our attention to the uh, letter from our bishop, Tim Smith, that's inserted in the bulletin this morning. I also have a word about um, the way offering will be gathered this morning in an attempt to um, uh, realize that the pandemic is spread by aerosols rather than necessarily by touch, but we've all become kind of germaphobes and um, to, to, anyway, we're going to be trying to reinstitute or put back into our service again um, the gathering of offering. The uh, ushers will be wearing gloves um, as they hold the communion plates, passing them uh, during offering. If, um, however, and I've talked with our ushers, if uh, people would still prefer to leave their offering in a plate at the end of the aisle in the narthex, There'll be a plate uh, available at the end of the service. Next week begins Advent, and um, the uh, Congregation Life Committee has a surprise next week. They're going to be distributing Advent bags that, can, that will contain a resource for um, daily prayer um, during the Advent season. It's a wonderful booklet by Fortress Press, and the bag will also have cookies and some other things in it. Also like to draw your attention and ask you again to mark your calendars for December 5th, uh, which is the first of our Vespers at St. Mark's concert series. And the concert is titled The Glorious Sounds of Christmas and will be a 10 piece brass ensemble with organ. I also thank you for continuing to wear masks as we are still in the pandemic and we're trying to do what we can for the health of our society and our world. For any that are tuning in via the internet, uh, watching us online, we thank you and welcome you to our service. If you've never been to St. Mark's before, please consider joining us for worship on Sunday morning or calling us or emailing us so we might get to know you. Let us quiet our hearts now as we prepare for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of Christ, the love of God, and the spirit of the, and the holy communion be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite Steve Rock to come forward with a temple talk. Steve? Good morning. morning. I am Steve Rock, newly elected president of St. Mark's Church Council. My purpose here today is to call your attention to Bishop Smith's article entitled Stewardship Season, which is enclosed in your worship folder. This article is perhaps the most powerful and forceful statement regarding stewardship that I've experienced in my 70 plus years of church membership. I've read this article several times this week. I encourage each of you to do the same later today and in the coming week. It occurred to me that the Christian church is filled with numerous words that convey peace, hope, and solace for the soul. Words such as grace, forgiveness, love, mercy, community. As the bishop points out, stewardship is not one of those words and oftentimes has an undeserved, ugly connotation. The words I would choose to focus on this morning are free and freedom, more specifically. It can be said that just about everything the church provides is free, no charge. And while things would be a lot easier if St. Mark's had your credit card on file, as Amazon and other service providers do, this is not how God intended the church to operate. Secondly, we have the freedom to choose to attend worship or not, to participate in the church's various ministries or not, to contribute or not. Third, there's a principle in business that people don't value things they receive that are free. Lastly, I want to quote St. Paul's letter to the Christians at Rome. But by the free gift of God's grace, all are put right with him through Christ Jesus, who sets them free. God offered him so that by his blood, he should become the means by which people's sins are forgiven through their faith in him. So as, you're cons as you consider your God-given freedom, I would ask you to review your financial commitment to St. Mark's for 2022. As Lowell Engelhart told you last week, the pledges, the pledges received to date cover about 60% of the funds needed to sustain, not expand, just to sustain our ministries. If you have not completed a pledge, please consider doing so. If you have already made a pledge, please ask yourself, have I done everything I can do to respond to God's grace? Thank you. The first reading is from Daniel, the seventh chapter. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. 
As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human coming down with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one who was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. King robed in majesty, the Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are far. Waters have lifted up, O oh Lord, the waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness befits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Ever since all Grace to you, rather this is the second reading from the first chapter of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord.
Gospel according to John, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Good morning. Today on Christ the King Sunday, we end the church year, and it's hard to believe that next Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, begins a new church year. Today on this last Sunday of the church year, we pause to think about the mystery of our faith that Christ's voice invites us into so that God's kingdom can dwell among us as the gathered body, the church, and Christ's kingdom can dwell here inside of us each and every day, helping us navigate through this world. Today's gospel reading centers upon the conversation between Jesus and Pilate in the gospel of John. It's really a conversation between and about two kingdoms, the kingdoms of this world and the kingdom of God. As all of us know, Pilate was the governor of Judea, a position he held for 10 years. Both the apostles and the Nicene Creed take great pains to establish the historicity of Jesus' life by including Pilate's name, saying that he suffered and died under the rule of Pilate. The creeds also seek to establish the humanity of Jesus in that he suffered, died, and was buried to redeem all humanity from sin, death, and the world and raised on the third day to give us the hope of eternal life. All four of the Gospels mention Pilate, but only in John's Gospel, only in John's Gospel, is the conversation unpacked. In the Synoptic Gospels, Pilate asked Jesus if he is the king of the Jews, and Jesus says, you have said so. And that's where the conversation ends. Jesus is silent after that in the Synoptics. But in John's Gospel, the conversation between Jesus and Pilate expands this to Jesus' kingdom and Jesus' positive affirmation that he as a kingdom. So in John, the conversation with Jesus and Pilate begins as Pilate re-enters the praetorium. He had been outside speaking with the Jewish leaders to hear more about the charges that they were bringing against Jesus. And so after coming back inside, Pilate summons Jesus and asks him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replied, do you ask this on your own or have other people been talking to you? about me. And here we see that Pilate shows a little bit of irritation in his reply to Jesus. He said, I'm not a Jew, am I? You tell me. Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. But Pilate refused to be questioned by Jesus. So he asks Jesus again, what have you done? In other words, what have you done that is so bad that you are brought before me with people asking for capital punishment? Why aren't they trying you according to their own religious laws? 
why are they bringing you here to be tried under Roman law? We can imagine a little bit Pilate's frustration at being thrust into a religious issue that was probably beyond his interest and also beyond his grasp. And Jesus now answers Pilate's question, saying, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. And this is the only time in the Gospels that Jesus' kingship is expressly mentioned by Jesus himself. Jesus states it positively that he has a kingdom, but it is not from this world. Jesus is distinguishing his kingdom from the kingdom that no doubt Pilate has in his mind of what kingship is authority over the political matters and daily rule of the principalities of this world. Jesus further states that his kingdom is different than the kingdoms of this world. It is a kingdom in which his followers will not violently fight for him or resist his being handed over to suffer death. In John's gospel, Jesus affirms that he is a king. He affirms his kingship over a kingdom, and he explains a principle of non-resistance, of peacefulness, and of his own self-sacrifice. All of these aspects place his kingdom in contrast to the kingdoms of this world. In this world, leaders expect their supporters to support and fight for them, to give their all for the cause. What Jesus wants to show Pilate is that his kingdom is not based on force or resistance by his disciples. His kingdom is only established by his total self-surrender to the cross, offering himself as a sacrifice to the sins of the world. This is something that we heard a moment ago as Lowell read in the reading from Revelation. To him who loves and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom of priests, serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Revelation is talking about this kingdom that Jesus establishes by his self-sacrifice, by his giving up his life, his blood for us, for the world. Jesus' words to Pilate lay bare a truth about the difference between the kingdoms of this world and God's kingdom. It's only the power of the Holy Spirit alive in us that knits us together as the kingdom and establishes the rule of God's kingdom in our hearts. No earthly government, and Lord knows many governments have tried, but no earthly government can remove the sin of the world or establish the rule of God in the human heart. Only the power of the Holy Spirit does that. This is why time and time again, as we all know, in national times of national emergencies throughout human history, governments have sought to use the church or religion in general to do their bidding in the human heart. The point that Jesus is making is that he alone power over the human heart. They may not use force to keep him from his self-surrender of the cross. After this point, Jesus remains silent in the gospel as he stands before Pilate. And this is what it means for us as Christians living in the world, is that our role in the world as a community of believers is determined by our citizenship in Christ's kingdom. The power of the Holy Spirit alive in us should frame everything else we do in the world. Everything we do day to day, in our work, our home life, our community, all aspects of our lives are led by the Holy Spirit and the kingdom that the Holy Spirit places here in which we follow the voice of Jesus. Christ's rule in our hearts should make a difference 
to how we approach the struggles of our life in this world. Our fellowship with the suffering servant, Jesus, empowers us and frees us to live for him and for others. You know, as Steve spoke a moment ago in the temple talk, I was thinking how appropriate his choice of the word free and freedom is for Lutherans. You know, we all know of Luther's little book, The Freedom of a Christian, in which Luther establishes that we are set free by Christ, not for some private purpose, but to serve God and our neighbor. And that voice of Jesus, if we follow him, will always lead us to a place of service and compassion for our neighbor. This very real spiritual struggle of the human heart that Jesus is suggesting in the gospel is the central message of Jesus and why Jesus referenced the prophets so often. To say it another way, Jesus' kingdom and his kingship is about the transformation of our hearts each and every day. Forgiving our sins so that free, freed from human sinfulness, we can truly and freely open our hands and voices in service to others. So after establishing his kingship and kingdom, Jesus says to Pilate, For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. You know, these words should cause us to sit up and listen. The church year has come full cycle. We will hear similar words in a few weeks at Christmas from the Gospel of John again. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen its glory. And again in John 8, Jesus says, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and the truth will make you free. And again in John 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I know my own, and they know me. They will heed my voice. Time and time again in John's gospel, Jesus talks about his voice, truth, and following his voice, and being set free from sin so that we might truly live as God created us live as human beings. Throughout John's gospel, Jesus is God's truth for human beings. Jesus comes into the world seeking entry into our hearts, giving us life in his kingdom. No kingdom in the world can give us the life that burns in our hearts through faith in Christ Jesus. Freedom in Christ is a powerful freedom that changes the human heart. Alive to Christ, we seek to imitate Christ so that we become Christ's body in the world, bearing the marks of suffering for others on our own bodies as we seek to do what we can for our community and for those around us. Our bodies become the hands, our voices and mouths become the voice of Jesus in the world to show compassion and justice amongst the kingdoms of this world. Today we celebrate that we have citizenship in his kingdom, a kingdom that has no end, in which Jesus is the alpha of history, the beginning, and history's goal, the omega, the goal and purpose of history is Christ. The prophet Daniel speaks of this in today's reading. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship over all peoples, nations, and languages that all should serve him. His kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. On Christ the King Sunday, we remember that Christ is prophet, priest, and king, the Alpha and the Omega, and his kingship, of which we are a part through grace and faith, helps us live in God's eternity each moment of our day. This is the kingdom that Jesus spoke about to Pilate. This is the word of truth for all nations, peoples, and languages. Through Christ, all people become sisters and brothers, no matter where they live. If you've ever had the opportunity to travel to another town and not know a church or any, anyone in town, you're there on business, you're there on vacation, you go to church on Sunday, and you feel at home. 
welcomed as a sister and brother in Christ. If you've ever traveled anywhere else in the world, you don't even speak the language of where you're at, but you make it to a church on Sunday. And you feel that you are a part of Christ's community because the Holy Spirit dwells there and it dwells here. We are made sisters and brothers in a global fellowship that spans all peoples, nations, and languages. What Daniel describes and Christ talks about is the promise of spiritual unity of the human heart that transforms us and transcends all limitations that we face as human beings in our world. The voice of Jesus invites us each day with justice and compassion to serve our neighbors. Jesus says, everyone who listens, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Listen to his voice. We cannot get to the kingdom without following his voice. We cannot say we belong to his kingdom or claim to know anything about him without listening to his voice. Jesus' voice is the voice of truth to people Jesus went to people on the margins of his world, the outcast, the sinner, the transgressor, the possessed, the oppressed. Jesus went to them, and Jesus comes to each of us. Today, that's what we celebrate on the last day of the church year, is that the Lord of all history deigns to live here in the humble sinful of our hearts that we might be transformed to serve others. There is no us and them in the kingdom. The kingdom of God includes all peoples as the prophet Daniel said. All nations, all languages, ethnicities, genders, identities. There is no us and them. You know, Pilate in today's reading really got close. Pilate, you kind of got the feeling Pilate was going to do the right thing. He knew time and time again that Jesus was innocent, that Jesus should not have been executed. He tried to release him, but in the end, Pilate caved in to the pressure of the sinful compromises that are so common in the kingdoms of this world. In the end, though Pilate knew Jesus was innocent, he could not hear the voice of truth in Jesus' voice. If you had the opportunity to stand face to face and have five minutes with Jesus, would you hear his voice? Would that be the voice that you would seek to follow each moment of your life? In a few moments, we will celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism and welcome Arden Vale English into God's family. And if you're thinking along the lines of baptism, I'm going to telegraph the punch, so to speak, and say it should remind you of Jesus' baptism. Jesus came up out of the water, and those around heard a voice saying, this is my beloved. Listen to him. This is my beloved. Listen to him. To be baptized is to be made an heir of God's kingdom, to become a citizen not only of our temporary citizenship in this world, but to already have one foot in God's kingdom in eternity, and to know it, and to be able to live within it each day. I hope that as Arden grows, she will hear Jesus' voice. I hope that as Arden grows, her sisters, Wren and Evelyn, her parents, Aaron and Alex, will encourage her to hear Jesus' voice so that she will know that Jesus loves her and the kingdom resides here and that she too can become the hands and voice of Jesus in this world. Though Arden doesn't know it yet, she has already been created to hear and to know Jesus. To him who loves us and frees us from our sins, by his blood be glory and honor forever and ever. Listen to his voice. His voice will be the difference in your life. His voice will free you from sin and free you 
with the purest freedom you've ever experienced to live for others. Listen to his voice. Amen. I'd like to invite the English family to come forward and the Foley family, the sponsors of the Foley family, to come forward for the sacrament of Foley baptism. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the Church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God.
called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God. Do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? I do. As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the creeds and the Ten Commandments, place in her hands the Holy Scripture, and nurture her in faith and prayer so that your child may learn and trust God. Proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? I do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture this child in Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? And people of God, do you promise to support Ardenvale English and pray for her in her new life in Christ? And I ask the assembly to join in in our profession of our faith. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Arden Vale, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Arden Vale with the gift of your Holy Spirit the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, 
the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Arden Vale, child of God. <laughs> you have been sealed. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Thank you. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative redeeming word to all the world. Let us welcome our newest member of God's family, Arden Vale. May God bless your life and may you always follow the voice of Jesus. Amen. The service continues with the prayers of intercession. Let us be together in prayer. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for your holy Catholic Church in every place and language. Bless all those who can hear your voice, feeling their words and actions with love and compassion, so that all the world might believe and know you as the God of love and peace. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to renew all creation. We thank you for the vast and varied life that thrives on this planet Earth and ask for compassionate hearts to care for the environment and all that has life. Grant governments the strength to intentionally pursue policies that protect and sustain creation and its resources so that all people might share in your abundance. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to lead us as the Prince of Peace, direct the government of this nation and all nations in choosing a nonviolent path towards the future. Grant leaders the patience to listen, as well as the humility and wisdom in making just decisions that will benefit all people. God, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus as the high priest who intercedes for our every need. We pray for all who are sick and suffering and for healthcare workers and first responders who seek to heal and save the lives of many each day. We ask for healing and relief upon members and friends of our church family. Jay, David, Charlie, Jeffrey, Virginia, Joseph, Robert, Rachel, Danielle, Joe, Carl, Jeff. Mary Lou, Jim, Paul, Jimmy, Doris, Ken, Rona, David, Carol, Debbie, Dean, Stephen, Van, Shirley, Diane, Ron Wenzel Sr., Lois, Amanda, Judy, Asher, Ken Hazen and family, Hunter, Bill, Sarah, 
Mindy, and the residents of Matthews Glen. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus as a servant king, setting us free to serve you. We pray for our world during an ongoing pandemic. Protect and heal and free all people from COVID, granting us the will to work together for the common good. We especially pray for soup kitchens, food banks, and overnight shelters in our community. Strengthen them in their work to overcome hunger and need. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus as the Alpha and the Omega. Help us always to look to him as the beginning and the end of our lives. Grant us faith to walk with Jesus as the saints before us, so that we too will stand before his holy throne, offering praise to Christ the King. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you, all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. I'm sorry. Yeah, the last one's the first and the last. Let us pray. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it. You have cho- yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. 
Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A feast of love is offered here for you and for all the saints.
understand that you were ill. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and me. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. Receive the sending blessing. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless you and keep you in his grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. the saints before us go in peace to serve the Lord. 